As a shonen anime fan, I saw Oshino Ko was the top anime on my anime list with only the first episode being out. And my immediate reaction was to call out this series and disparage it in any way possible because my thoughts were the Redditors are at it again. They've called this Gintama, they've called this Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood series the best series of all time when it is simply not. That was my intention when watching Oshino Ko. I wanted to find everything on it, all the dirt I could find on it, and be intellectually dishonest and expose the series. But unfortunately for myself, the series is actually amazing. I mean, I haven't seen an anime like this ever. The story feels so unnatural. It feels so real that it's hard to explain. It is so well made and fleshed out, it's actually unbelievable. Starting from the beginning with our character Goro, the doctor who has this weird obsession with underage girls. Oh yeah, trust me, I was getting the insults ready. I had them on deck. I was going to call this guy every name under the sun because that is what he is. This series fleshed out in a completely different way than I expected. I thought I was going to be his girlfriend or something. It was going to be like this, this weird like arrow manga sensei thing, but it went in a completely different direction that surprised me and honestly impressed me. But before we get into that, if you do enjoy the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for similar content in the future. Let's get straight into this. We're first introduced to this doctor named Goro. And Goro has a weird taste. This taste in a, a J-pop girl band. I mean, straight off the bat, as someone who just wanted to hate on this anime, I mean, you're giving me material already to hate on it with. This older man, this doctor, middle-aged guy is interested in a girl band. And even further than that, these girls are underage and he's ecstatically excited about this. I mean, this is peak degeneracy at its finest and he gets called out on this. And at this point, I was thinking, oh no, this is one of these Japanese weird cultural things that I don't wanna get involved in. But fortunately for him, he gets let off the hook here. The reason why we find out he has such an interest in I is because of this former patient he's had named Serena. And she was unfortunately had this terminal illness that was killing her. She was dying, but she had this fascination with I, with this group. And this transferred on to Goro after her passing. So straight from the beginning of the series, we already have a building. A building of these characters. Why does this guy have such a weird taste? Why does he like underage girls? I mean, he likes underage girls because of this patient he had before. It all makes sense. And then just by happenstance, I comes into the hospital where he works and she's pregnant. She's pregnant. This girl that he is looking up to that he's a fan of is pregnant. In the movie, there was a lot of talk about whether he should advise her to keep the baby or not based on his personal feeling. And this brought a lot of interest points, especially for me as a viewer, you know, even if you're a big fan of this girl, we're talking about a human life here, her baby and you potentially don't want to deliver this baby because you're a big enough fan of hers and it will ruin her career. Personally, for me, I didn't understand it, but it added an interesting point to the series where I wanted to keep watching to see what happens, to see if this guy would make a bad decision that would anger me and make me feel a certain way about the series, or whether or not he would go through with delivering the baby. And that's exactly what happens. He advises her to have the kid. Yes, she's only 16, 15, a teenager at this time, but this is a child nonetheless. So right before she's about to have the kid, we get this interesting element added where there's this stalker who follows our doctor after he leaves the hospital at night and basically says, you know, are you taking care of I or I know what you're doing as sort of a creepy stalker thing. And then our doctor chases him down and eventually ends up dying due to his oblivious nature, you could say. This foundation that the story was based on already has an interesting story to go off that. And this catapults us straight into the next part of the series where our doctor actually gets reincarnated as I's child alongside 
the patient, the sickly girl who died a long time ago as twins. We're not even halfway through the first episode and there's already a bunch of questions that need to be answered. How did girl get reincarnated as one of the twins to begin with? And even more than that, this young girl that had a, a terminal illness came back as a twin alongside him at the same time. It seemed like she's been dead for a long time. So how did she come at the same time? Why did this stalker kill a doctor if, if he's obsessed with I? What does the doctor have to do with it? I mean, so many different questions, and this is just the beginning of the series. This shows the depth. We haven't even got to the point where we take a glimpse into what I's lifestyle is and how the children, how these reincarnates are actually living. This added a whole nother element to this series. We already had the interesting base foundation to come off of, but now we had this different perspective. We see how I is trying to make ends meet, that she's this big star, yes, but she doesn't get paid basically anything, and how she's struggling going through all of this to try and make a career. And she has this talent, this drive, and even if things are gonna hold her back, she is going to achieve her dream. And while this is happening, we see the development of the reincarnates, the children, Aqua and Ruby, and how they help defend I from this crazy nanny that got sick of her husband, and how their life can possibly develop into an entertainment life following eyes. We see Ruby and Aqua support their mother as much as they can and open opportunities that she wouldn't have got before, essentially changing the future. Aqua is essentially playing with fate here. Things that would have never happened are happening now. And the story is developing and shifting to the point where I becomes the center of the story. Ruby and Aqua are kind of on the side. I is the focus of the story. We see a lot about her, about how she has her past trauma. Her mother never loved her. Her father never loved her, was never there for her. She had a tragic beginning. We see how this made her into a sociopath. She can't have feelings for people in the proper way that a normal human does because of the way that she was raised. We start to feel sympathetic and really connect with I on a deeper level. And then everything culminates to this point. This point where something that was so unexpected it threw every viewer who had not read the manga into a cyclone. As I is about to get ready for the biggest event of her career, this stalker, the guy who initially killed the doctor, rings the doorbell and I goes to answer the doorbell. And many mistakes were made here by I. Her careless nature, as she's developing into this better person, she's so happy about her life that she's not worried about something like this. She's not paying attention to all the bad things that could possibly come. And this ultimately leads to I's demise. Throughout the beginning of the series, there is this conspicuous nature about who the father is of I's children. Because once again, she is a teenager. This guy is either a teenager just like her, or he is a weird, pervy adult. And that seems to be the theme. Because what's shown as a reason for why what happened to I at the end of episode one happened is when she went to a phone booth and tried to contact the father of her children. And the father of I's children contacting this creeper, this stalker, to take care of her is what is thought to have led to her demise. She was stabbed and she bled to death in front of Aqua and all Ruby could do is sit behind a door and listen to her mother fade into the afterlife. The feeling of seeing your mother bleed out in front of you has to be something that can't be comparative. And this creates a whole nother story. Because like I said, I was becoming the center of the story. But now, 
the narrative shifts. Now it's all about Aqua's revenge. He needs to get revenge against the one who killed his mother. And the main suspect is his father. So that is his mission. A story that started as a run of the mill anime with this weird, creepy doctor that likes watching underage girl pop bands or whatever to this story about how this pop star has to take care of her kids while trying to make a living for herself. And even more so than that, having to avoid these things like stalkers coming after her, like forcing a smile, having to deal with childhood trauma of her mother leaving her and it leaving in a lasting emotional trauma onto her to the point where she doesn't even know how to really express a true smile until her kids show her what love means. And then once she gets to the point where she's finally bettering herself, she ends up dying in an extremely tragic and cruel way in front of her children leaving them with a lasting feeling of hopelessness, depression, and most importantly, revenge. Like I said in the beginning, I went into this series with the intention to disparage it, and I haven't lost that completely. The main character girl is a weird guy. He likes girl bands when they're underage. He is a weird guy. You are a doctor. You make good money in Japan and you look at girl bands. You are a loser. But other than that, this series is really amazing. There's, there's nothing negative I can say about this series. It's just so well fleshed out. And as a shonen anime fan, I don't think I even looked at my phone throughout the whole episode. That's how good it was. Let me know what you think about the series in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for similar content in the future. I will see you in the next video.